The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Your home. 
this morning we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and we enter into your courts with praise blessed be the name of the Lord who was and is and is to come Lord we arise this morning with the breath of life in our bodies we arise this morning with the grace of God upon our lives we arise this morning and we say thank you Lord thank you for life thank you for strength thank you for health thank you for preserving us in times of trouble you never left us in times of pandemic you never forsook us Lord we are so grateful we are thankful to you this morning we are thankful that your blood covers us. We are thankful that you keep us. You are the keeper. You are the keeping God. You are the God that preserves us. You are the God that preserves our sons and daughters. And for this we are grateful. We are so thankful this morning. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise and we say blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be the name of the Lord who was and is and is to come this morning we are thanking you God for strength we're thanking you God for another day we're thanking you God that you are giving us what we need to live day by day, week by week, month by month. The Spirit of the Lord is breathing over the waters. The Spirit of the Lord is breathing over the nations. The Spirit of the Lord is breathing over our families. And this morning, God, we acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your dominion. We say blessed be the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and we are safe. Revelations 5, 11 and 12. And I beheld... And I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand, times ten thousands, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature 
that is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and those that are in the sea and all that are there therein they heard me saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sits upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and forever hallelujah blessed and honor and glory and power be unto the lamb blessed be your name blessed be your name we honor your name we exalt your name blessed be the name of the lord we worship you god we worship you god Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Father, we praise you. We exalt you this morning because of who you are. You are the true and the living God. You are the first and the last. You are the I am that I am. From the rising of the sun, even until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The righteous run into you and we are safe. You are the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. And it is by your blood that we have remission of sins. It is by your blood that we can be redeemed from the iniquities of our father's altars and mother's altars. It is by the blood of Yeshua that we are cleansed and we are purged. It is by your blood. And so today, God, I ask you to wash us in your blood. Cleanse us from all iniquity. Purify our minds in the precious blood of Yeshua. Cleanse our thoughts. Cleanse our heart. Cleanse our ways, God. Lord, wash us in your precious blood from the crown of our head to the very soles of our feet. We come before you this morning recognizing our shortcomings, recognizing our ways, recognizing that we are nothing without you. We are nothing without your presence. We are nothing without your power. We are nothing without your dominion. We are nothing without you, God. And so this morning, I ask you to cleanse us in your precious blood. Cleanse us from all iniquity. Cleanse us from all sin. Cleanse us from wrong thoughts. Every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We bring it down to the obedience of Christ. We pull down every high thought of treason this morning. Every wrong thought. Every wrong mindset. Every wrong patterns in our mind, in our attitudes, our behaviors that are displeasing to you. As we fast and pray during these 10 days of awe, Lord, we bring down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of the glory of God. We pull it down to the obedience of Christ. Lord, I come against every spirit that exhorts itself against the knowledge of the glory of God in my life. I come against all principalities and powers of the air by the blood of Jesus.
I come against spiritual wickedness in high places, powers and thrones, dominions, world rulers that exalt itself against the knowledge of God in my life. I come against every strong man exerting influence over my family, over my children, over my sons, my daughters, my ministers, my pastors, the prophets of God. I come against every demonic power this morning through the power of the blood of Yeshua. And we take captive every high thought that exalts itself. We take captive every spirit of witchcraft control that would seek to control our minds, that would seek to direct our thoughts, to lead us off of the straight and narrow path and to bring us into the wide broad road of destruction. We take captive every spirit that tries to bind and block the mind. Every mind binding spirit, we pull it down to the obedience of Christ this morning. We bind every spirit of domination, spirits of destruction, every spirit of fantasy and lust, perversion, intimidation. We bind it and we take captivity of every high thought working with these spirits in the mighty name of Jesus. And we bring it down to the obedience of Christ this morning. Lord, we take authority this morning over every fiery arrow that would be shot at us from the second heavens, from the headquarters of Satan. Every fiery arrow that is shooting at our minds, shooting at our spirit, shooting at our ministers, shooting at the houses of prayer, shooting at our sons and daughters. We destroy and dismantle every fiery arrow and we command it to be returned to sender. We command every fiery arrow shot at us from the second heavens, from the headquarters of Satan, above the waters, below the sea, from the cemetery, from the second heavens, from the secret places, from the covens of witches and warlocks. We command all fiery arrows to return to sender. We command all fiery darts to return to sender. God, right now, we overturn and we override every satanic trap, every satanic plot, every scheme of the devil, wherever the arrows went to ensnare our pathway, we command the arrows to uproot itself and be returned to sender. We return every fiery dart. We return every arrow of shame. We return every spirit of divination. We return every spirit of witchcraft back to sender. Back to sender. Go back to your sender. Satumbro Sotokosata. This morning we are warring in the blood of Jesus against all fiery darts, against all spirits of witchcraft that would be shot at us in this new year. Let it be returned to sender. We command every wicked attack of the devil to be returned to sender. We send it back to whence it came back to sender in the mighty name of Yeshua. I release the fire of God and the blood of Jesus and I render every attack of the enemy coming against our lives. I render it null and void. I render it ineffective, powerless, useless. I trample upon the works of the enemy. I trample upon the plans of the enemy. I trample upon the spirits of witchcraft, the evil arrows, every plot, every scheme, every fiery serpent. I crush the neck of every fiery serpent under my foot, under my foot, under my foot under my foot i break your powers i break your stronghold i bind your works and i cross the neck of the serpent under my foot today in the mighty name of jesus satan your assignment is cancelled over our lives for this new year 
It is cancelled by fire. Satumbro sotoko satakaya Satakaya by fire. Cancelled by fire. It is cancelled by fire in the mighty name of Yeshua. We are under the blood. Our families are under the blood. Our children are under the blood. Our ministries are under the blood. We are under the blood. We are under the blood. We are under the blood of Yeshua. We begin this new year with prayer and fasting uprooting the forces of darkness overriding satanic powers crushing the neck of devils under our feet we crush the neck of serpents under our feet we crush every fiery dart under our feet behold god has given us power and authority to trample and dismantle every wicked works of the enemy luke 10 and 19 and so i pray according to luke 10 and 19 we crush the neck of every fiery fiery serpent under our foot under our foot under our foot satan we crush your powers we crush your powers we sever your plans we scatter your works we uproot your assignment you are crushed you are dismantled under our foot this morning satumbro sotoko satakayata we break down we break down the covens of the enemy. We break down the hiding places of witches and warlocks. Satumbro Sotokosata. We break it down this morning by fire and by force. We break down the powers of darkness. We break down the hiding places of witches and warlocks. We break it down this morning through the power of fasting and prayer, through the power of the blood of Yeshua. And we crush every hiding devil. We crush it under our feet. Satumbro Sotokosa. Those of you that are sitting, I want you to use your feet and begin to crush that devil under your foot. Take, use your feet this morning and crush it. Crush it. Crush it with your heel. Crush the neck of that fiery serpent coming against our life. Luke 10 and 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you nothing will hurt us nothing will hurt us nothing will hurt you in this new year nothing will hurt your families Nothing will hurt your sons and your daughters. We crush devils under our feet. We crush every devil, every confusion. We crush it under our feet. Every spirit of contention, crush it under our feet. Every rebel rousing spirit, we crush it under our feet. Spirits of destruction, spirits of perversion, spirits of intimidation, we crush you under our feet. We bind the forces of darkness and we crush every demonic sickness, every spiritual sickness sickness sent against your body we crush it under our feet spirits every spirit sent to attack you in your health we crush it spirits of infirmity we crush you under our feet spirits of cancer spiritual sicknesses of the ovaries of the womb of the blood spiritual sicknesses of the breast and of the body we crush every spiritual sickness every spiritual infirmity every spiritual cancer every spiritual spiritual cell every abnormal growth in your body sent against your life by evil witches and witchcraft doctors we crush their powers we crush their powers we crush their powers we crush that fiery serpent under our feet by the blood of Jesus this morning Every spiritual and wicked sickness, spirits of infirmity, every infection, every swelling of the body, every swelling of the foot, every swelling of the back, swelling of your limbs, swelling of your joints, 
sent by the evil one. We crush it under our feet and we command that fiery serpent, uproot yourself out of our bodies. Uproot yourself and return to sender. Wherever that fiery serpent was sent to cause swelling of your body, swelling of your joints, migraine headaches, unusual migraine headaches, unusual beating of the veins in your heart, in your neck, in your head, unusual headaches, viruses, coughing, plagues, uncommon cold, uncommon scratchy throat, coughing, sicknesses, every demonic sickness sent against your life and your family's life we crush it this morning we crush the neck of every spirit of infirmity every spiritual sickness every bad eye every jinx every spell every hex every voodoo every person that rear their ugly mouth against you return to sender let the curses be returned backfire in the mighty name of Jesus I'm under the blood I'm under the blood my children are under the blood your family is under the blood your sons and daughters under the blood no spiritual sickness will come near your dwelling no spiritual infirmity no infirmity no sickness will come near your dwelling every spiritual sickness that was forged in the house of the witches in the house of the necromancer I command it uproot yourself out of my family and return to sender go back Go back, go back, go back to the one who forged it. Satumbro Sotokosata. We do not accept it. We do not accept it. Satakayatata. We do not accept it. We do not accept any spiritual sickness. Spirits of infirmity. We do not accept it. Uproot yourself. Satumbro Soto. And go back to the one that sent you. Satumbro Sotokosata. Spirits of infirmity, spirits of old age, spirits sent to cover your shame, to steal your glory. Spiritual sickness sent against your bodies by the outside woman and the strange woman so that they can steal your husband. Uproot yourself, uproot yourself by fire, by fire, by fire. Uproot yourself out of my family and return to sender. Satumbro Sotoko Satakayata. Karabaka sondo robo kusata. Every demonic frog, every demonic frog, I'm seeing a demonic frog this morning. There's a demonic frog that was released with your name in its mouth. Karumbo kusata kayata. And as that frog is dying out and that frog is rotting, they have sent that evil smell to come upon you so that your husband will turn against you and that your husband will hate you. He will, he will despise you. But this morning, I command every demonic frog set up against my life, set up against the people of God to die by fire, die by fire, die by fire, die by fire. Kasumbro soto kosata. Every spirit of death, every spirit of death being released by the demonic frog die by fire die by fire die by fire every spirit of rotten flesh set up by the satanic altars die by fire die by fire let their satanic ovens and covens catch fire now let their satanic altars catch fire now let their satanic plots catch fire now let the witches and the warlocks let their hand be roasted by fire roast by fire roast by fire Satumbro soto kosata kayata. Rabaka soto toto boko sata kayata. We do not accept it. Return to sender. Satumbro soto kosata. Whoever forged that witchcraft, let it return to sender. Satumbro soto kosata kayata. For this reason was the Son of God made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. This morning we override and we overthrow every evil altar 
by fire, by fire, by fire, by fire, by fire, die by fire, die by fire, die by fire, die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. We scatter the forces of darkness working against your life. And I decree and declare this new year is the new year of the Lord. We advance into the new year of the Lord with a new glory upon our lives. A new glory is released upon your life. The anointing of God shines upon your life. No demonic altars will have your name on it. The anointing of glory shines upon your life. The Lord will reign upon your families. The Lord will reign. The Lord will reign over your families, over your houses. Satumbro Sotokosa. There is a new anointing coming over your life this year. A new anointing is coming as the Lord begins to reign upon your life. The Lord will rain down upon your business. A new glory is coming. A new glory. The Spirit of the Lord will thunder over your life and over your families. You are untouchable in this new year. Satumbro Sotokosata. They will regret that they ever touched you last year. Satumbro Sotokosata. A new anointing is raining down. A new power is raining down. A new glory is raining down. Come in this place. I decree and declare the spirit of the Lord reigns over your life. I declare the spirit of the Lord reigns over your businesses. A new glory enters your business. New power enters your life. New power enters your family homes. Receive new power this morning. New power is released unto your lives this morning. New power. In three days time, you're about to see results. And you will know that it is the spirit of the Lord that have dismantled those demonic powers. You will have manifestation in three days time. Receive the word of the Lord. Three days time. Those of you under the sound of my voice, the spirit of the Lord says in three days time, Someone will ask to leave the business. They will have an excuse and they will say they can no longer work for you. The Lord says allow them to go. That's the spirit of the demonic frog leaving your business. Let them go. Do not cry and do not pray. Satabaka, satabaka. Satabaka, satabaka. Begin to pray in your heavenly language.
what you pray for. The story is told in the Holy Scriptures of how two blind men desperately sought Jesus after hearing the testimony of him raising a girl back to life from the dead. They groped for anything within sight, bumped into various people and obstacles, fell at intervals. The goal was just to reach the man who was being celebrated and whom they hoped could cure them of their illness. After getting his attention and tendering their request, a salient question was asked of them. Do you believe that I can do this? The common sense question to ask at that point would have been, have we come this far to toy with your abilities? But that wasn't the case for this man as they simply answered in the affirmative and the request was granted them. Matthew 9 verses 27 and 28. Believers in Christ today face similar challenges but we fail to appropriate faith in our requests and petitions. In his book titled Stardust, American fiction author Neil Gaiman says, you have to believe, otherwise it will never happen. Your ability to believe creates an avenue for you to get whatever you desire. Belief is the gateway to receiving a thing. What you believe as achievable is what you eventually can achieve. Truth is, what the mind can conceive, such a being can achieve it. Firstly, I'd like to apologise for interrupting your video. I'm not here to sell you anything or promise you overnight riches. I just wanted to shoot a very genuine video. I want you to know that you are where God wants you to be at this very moment. And every experience is part of His divine plan. God is not punishing you, but rather He's preparing you. So you need to trust His plans and not your pain. God has placed you where you are, and He has placed you there for this moment, and He has placed you there for a reason. So remember this, and trust that He's working everything out. God puts dreams in our hearts, and writes a destiny over our lives. And if we trust Him enough to take Him for His word, we will find ourselves on a journey towards the fulfillment of that dream. But unfortunately, the path that takes us to the promise is always wrought with tickets and thorns. Nothing but having has ever come easy or without opposition. Storms will come, the lions will roar, and our fears will be confronted. Now God allows the path to be difficult because He intends on refining us and preparing us for our place of promise. He is intent on extracting from us that which our enemy would love to leverage against us. God loves us too much to promote us before we are ready. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 tells us that He wants to do abundantly above and beyond all that we could ever ask or think. But there's a clincher in this verse and it's according to His work within us. So the extent to which He is allowed to work in us will be the extent to which He does great things through us. So if you are in a season of refining, I want you to lean in. I want you to trust the loving hand of your precious Savior and know that He will lead you to the other side. Many of us get so used to being in want that we don't have a clue what to do when we finally get those things that we ask for. Have you ever prepared for what you're asking the Lord to do in your life? Just take a minute and ask yourself, have you actually prepared for it? There are a lot of things that he's unable to release to us because we we'll squander it. And if there's something in your heart that you've been passionate God for, if there's something in your heart that you've been asking him for and you're yet to receive it, I want to challenge you to really look at your life and see if you're prepared for it. 
You're asking God for a child. Do you have the emotional capacity? Do you have the spiritual capacity to take care of a child? Do you have the financial capacity to take care of a child? Firstly, let me apologise for interrupting the YouTube video that you're about to watch. I just want to make it clear that I'm not here to try and sell you something. You're asking God for a spouse. Have you trained yourself? Have you worked on yourself? Do you have a heart big enough to accommodate another person? We all blindly ask for things without thinking about what it will cost us to maintain. Have you ever wondered why the prodigal son ended up in the big bed? It's interesting that he was so anxious to get his inheritance, but he didn't even have a plan. He didn't even start a business. Even when he got the wealth, he didn't even invest it in anything. He just went and spent the money on pleasures, and he kept on spending and spending till it was all gone. This tells us that there's a danger in receiving the blessing before you're ready. I remember an adage about the butterfly that was in a cocoon and someone felt that he could hasten the process and he broke the cocoon and guess what happens? That larva that was meant to be a butterfly dies. He forgot that it takes time. It takes time and it takes preparation. So this tells us that a blessing that comes before your being ready is dangerous and it is detrimental. Even God himself will not give you what you cannot handle. So when we receive what we fail to make room for, we can end up feeling overwhelmed and that can lead to self-sabotage. Just take a look at the story of the 10 virgins in Matthew chapter 25. Now this is a very good example of preparing for an answered prayer. Now they're all in the right place and at the right time. And they went out together to meet the bridegroom, but only half of them were wise enough to carry some extra oil. And the foolish virgins knew he was coming. And they went out to meet him. And when he got there, they missed it. They wasted so much time and the bridegroom was delayed. And they still allowed themselves to fall asleep without doing what they needed to do to stay ready. Now the question is, how many of us are building up opportunities due to lack of self-preparation? How many of us have sabotaged ourselves in the heart? This is sabotage of the heart. I want you to understand that faith without works is dead. If you're asking God for something and you're not prepared for it, don't even expect it. And if it does come, it's going to destroy you. I believe we're in a time where God wants us to all prepare to receive. It may not look like it, but I want you to get that when you ask God for something and it takes time to come to you, you should look around and ask yourself, am I really ready to receive this thing? Am I actually ready to receive this thing I'm asking for? The faith of Abraham to say yes, to leave his home and follow God into the unknown surely wasn't his first step of obedience and faithfulness. And it likely came after numerous untold steps of saying yes to trust God. Now Abraham had no doubt because he had been in training for that. He had been in training for years, yes, for years. And after all, he was 75 years old when God called him and told him to go. Now the faith we see recorded in Genesis had been formed tested and refined over those 75 years. And after those 75 years of training, it brought him to the pivotal moment in Genesis chapter 12. And as significant as Abraham's yes was, he didn't just say yes for saying sake. He agreed to leave Haran. He agreed to follow God into the unknown. And that was just the beginning of his story. Now what follows here is not just blissful, but what follows here are countless other trials and decisions for Abraham. There were moments of deciding whether to say yes to God and trust him to lead him through the next challenge. God was indeed faithful to each one. God was very faithful to every time Abraham agreed to walk with him. And yes, Abraham was being led by God. Abraham was being equipped by God. Abraham was being protected by God. But now the question is, what about you? I'm sure you're asking. 
how can you also experience an Abraham like faith? How can you also be prepared to place your trust in God when the big moments come in your life? The story we know of Abraham begins with a step. He didn't know where he was going or why he was going or what he would face along the way. He simply said, yes. He simply said yes and walked with God. Then he continued to take step after step in obedience and trusting that each step would deepen his faith and bring him closer to God. And by faith, when Abraham was called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, he obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. So your first step with God may not be this big. We're not all called to move to a new place, but obedience and trust is what is required. You need to trust God so we can step out of our comfort zones, so we can step beyond our status quo, so we can step out of our current circumstances. And it's in each step that we learn to trust God. In the highs and in the lows, we learn to trust God. We trust God through the small challenges and we prepare to trust God in the big storms that life brings. Now each step we take with God is training our hearts to know Him. It's training our hearts to know Him and trust His power. You see, there's so many things that we're praying for. There's so many things that we're expecting God to do for us in this season of our lives. Some of us are praying for new homes. Some of us are praying for relationships. Some of us are praying for new careers. Some of us are praying for new opportunities. The question is, are you ready? Are you ready? David didn't just magically kill Goliath. Did you know that? While he was being a shepherd boy in the field, David had killed lions and bears. So the courage that David displayed on the battlefield against Goliath was not just as a result of the Spirit of God being with him. If David had no training, it would have been a slaughter. But David was training in the secret place. David was getting himself ready and when the opportunity showed itself, David took it without thinking thrice. So are you ready? Are you ready for the blessing that God has in store for you? Because if you're not, it could probably kill you. But I also want us to understand that with each blessing that comes, there's responsibility. And in order for us to show God that we can be trusted with this new responsibility, we have to show Him that we are prepared to receive it. And we do that by showing Him how we handle what we already have. So the question is this, you're believing God for a new car. How are you handling the old one? You're believing God for a spouse. How are you handling your life? Same applies for a child. Or you're believing God for a new job. Have you been faithful in your own home? Or you're believing God for a business of your own. Have you been able to handle the business of others well? Have you been able to handle other people's business as well? These are the questions we need to ask ourselves. Because it's these little things that matter. God does not look at how efficiently or effectively or speedily you do things. He looks at the heart with which you serve. So if you're not prepared in the place of your heart, if you're not prepared in the place of your mind, if you're not prepared all around, that blessing that's coming may be detrimental to you. God's ready to bless you. All he needs is just for you to get ready. God bless you. Oh
declarations and decrees. I decree and declare the blessing of the Lord over your life, the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow be added to you. This is Apostle Anna Edwards saying have a joyful day, have a rich and rewarding day, have a fulfilling day. As we fast and pray, I want you to know that we are preparing for the blessing that is coming. Day by day, the Lord is preparing us mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. The blessing that's coming, it's going to be big. It's going to be weighty. And it's going to be a mega blessing of God's goodness for this new year. Our preparation is important. I bless you today with joy. I bless you today with new grace. I bless you today with new power. I bless you today with new wisdom. I bless you today with new revelation. I decree and declare that your spiritual eyes are open and you're about to behold the mysteries of the kingdom as we fast and pray. The oil of heaven falls upon your head even now. Let the oil of Jehovah fall upon your sons and daughters wherever they are, your spouses the oil of heaven falls upon their life today in the mighty name of Jesus Amen and Amen Have a wonderful joyful day everyone See you on tonight at 7pm Shalom